Hello, welcome to today's immigration tidbit. Well, I've done other videos on crimes involving moral turpitude, but a little clarification here is needed. Uh, now, a, a little different part of it. I'd like to talk specifically if one commits a crime involving good moral character, crime involving moral turpitude, or as we term immigration attorneys say, CMT, uh, whether or not you'll be placed in removal proceedings and deported. And if you are placed in removal proceedings, what can you do? Well, first of all, normally, crimes of moral turpitude, if it's just that, are not aggravated felons. Now, that doesn't mean that an aggravated felony uh, cannot be a crime of moral turpitude. Okay, obviously, if somebody murders somebody, that is most definitely a crime of moral turpitude, but you're not really worried about the CMT in cases like that, where there's aggravated felony type crimes, because the aggravated felony statutes take over and you're deported based upon that, essentially for the rest of your life. So we're talking about the CMTs that aren't aggravated felonies, but that may land you in removal proceedings. So first of all, um, I have a lot of people say, well, I had this and that crime and I successfully got it expunged, so therefore it doesn't exist. And that may be for criminal law. It may be for employment law. It may be for a whole plethora of state-related laws. But in immigration law, that's not the case. An expungement means nothing, okay? The, the, the only crime that an expungement helps would be generally in the Ninth Circuit if you are a uh, have a possession uh, crime of drugs and it's your first offense and the time it occurred and you fall under the Federal First Offenders Act. Okay, that's quite a narrow exception. But other than that, expungements don't do anything. Okay, they, they do not mean under immigration law you didn't commit the crime. As far as immigration law is concerned... You still committed the crime of moral turpitude. You still may be put in removal proceedings. You still may be inadmissible. So I have to let them know, those people who think expungements is a panacea of uh, you know, relief and uh, ability to make the crimes disappear, that it doesn't for immigration purposes, and it gets even worse. If you do an expungement, for example, on a crime of moral turpitude, and you're filling out an application and you, it says, have you ever been arrested, convicted, whatever, and you say no because some criminal lawyer told you that for all intents and purposes, this crime doesn't exist anymore, you are committing misrepresentation and fraud, and now you are not only inadmissible or deportable because of the crime of moral turpitude, you now have the added charge of misrepresentation and fraud. So given that, just make sure you consult an immigration attorney whenever you're going to fill anything out. Now, if you're in removal proceedings and you do have a crime of moral turpitude, and that's the reason you're in there, you need to see what type of relief you might be available for. Okay, so the first thing I would do is determine if, in fact, the crime makes you deportable. If, in fact, it is a crime of moral turpitude. Just because... Uh, the trial attorneys over at immigration say that it is by no means is a foregone conclusion that it is a crime of moral turpitude. Now, that doesn't mean that if you're going to challenge that, you're not going to have an uphill battle and a fight and it's, you know, not going to be uh, real easy to get that uh, conclusion overturned. However, uh, there's been numerous cases over the last 20 years where immigration has claimed it was a crime of moral turpitude and legal arguments from immigration attorneys to immigration judges show why it's not, okay? So that's the first thing. Second thing is need to see if uh, it may fall under the petty offense exception, okay? If it falls under the petty offense exception, there are certain elements of relief you are available for that you are not otherwise, okay? And generally, that is 
<clears throat> a crime where, you know, you are sentenced to less than six months and so forth. There's some different requirements, um, but that's the next thing to check. Uh, the, the other thing that you might seriously look into is what relief you would be available, would be available to you. So the first thing that comes to mind is cancellation of removal. So if you happen to have a green card, you're a lawful permanent resident, and you have the requisite number of years available, uh, you are able to show, minus this crime, that it's not an aggravated felony, um, and you can show rehabilitation and you know various other things. Uh, you can fight to essentially get your you know free card out of jail, and uh, you know get to keep your lawful permanent residency. Okay, if you've never had the green card and you committed this crime, it's a whole different ball game, because then there's an issue with applying for cancellation of removal for non permanent residents. And that has some issues with whether or not you can even do it with this particular crime. I would also look to see, do you qualify possibly for adjustment of status or readjustment of status with a criminal waiver? Okay, do you qualify for asylum, withholding, convention against torture? Uh, there's all kinds of stuff that can be available to you inside of removal proceedings with a crime of moral turpitude. Um, without you essentially giving up, signing the please deport me papers, and then six months after that when you're deported, wishing you didn't do it, and trying to find your way back. Okay?